Okay, so this is for um, Bloody Shakespeare assignment two. And just to clarify, like in the other video, um, I'm not calling it Bloody Shakespeare because I hate it. I love Shakespeare. That's just the name of the module because we explored a lot of concepts to do with blood as Bloody Shakespeare history plays. Hence the word, use of the word bloody <laughs> because they are, they're very graphic. And um, some of the description that Shakespeare is able to like create is very, um, very visceral. So they are very dark plays, but they're interesting. Um, so this was assignment two and we had as always we had a range of questions we could pick from this one jumped out to me the most though because personally my favorite plays were like to do with um henry the fourth and henry the fifth actually i really liked king richard the second as well i kind of liked all of them but there was one that i didn't like as much as the others and i can't remember which one it was but um henry the fifth is oh it was brilliant so the question was, Henry V has been described as a supremely effective king because he is a consummate actor, and that's by a, crit a critic called Crossman. Discuss this statement about the relationship between performance skills and kingship, making close reference to any of the two history plays. So I um, was really attracted to this question because much like his father, who from the first play, um, Richard II, um, Bodenbroke, who ends up becoming King Henry IV by the end of King Richard II because he goes on this massive, like, war path extravaganza, don't really know else how to describe it, to usurp, unlawfully usurp King Richard II because he's banished after his little jeweled in stunt with Thomas Mowbray at the beginning of King Richard II. King Richard turns around as, like, Rather than killing you both, I'm going to banish both of you forever. You never see Thomas Mowbray again. He just goes off into the sunset and, like, don't know what happens to him. We just assume he lives out his days in exile. Bolingbroke breaks his exile before the time because he's his cousin, King Richard II. Um, I don't know why I did that. He is actually his cousin. King Richard II decides to be lenient and delivers a lesser, set lesser sentence because he's family. Bodenbroke breaks that, he raises an army during his time in exile and comes back to basically unlawfully usurp the king, so it's all very treacherous and dodgy. By the time we get to King Henry IV, he ends up having a son who becomes Henry V. Henry V has developed a lot of the kind of political performative traits of his father king henry the fourth diminishes in those skills henry the fifth is very successful at bringing them back so this whole question was just geared towards exploring that so i ended up arguing the fact that although performative skills I acknowledged that he does employ the performative skills, but I felt like that statement really undermines the reason why Henry V's kingship is so successful. So I argued it's um, Hal's willingness to immerse himself in all areas of, of society because he um, he immerses himself in the lower culture. Um, he goes to taverns and he hangs out with a really rough crowd. Um, and it's his self-alignment with his own identity. He identifies as being more of a soldier than a king. And that kind of allows him to move away from the burden of his father's crown. Because King Henry IV is all about how Bolingbroke, who is now king, he very much struggles with and has a lot of guilt about the fact that he usurped the crown from his cousin. So... That's something that sort of plagues his kingship, whereas his son is able to escape that because he chooses to identify as a soldier and he's kind of like a man of the people. Um, so that's kind of what I've argued. I get the result. I get the result of this today. So hopefully it's gone well. I do not know. Um, and the plays I mainly used were the history of Henry the Fourth and Henry the Fifth were the main focus, and then. I also made references where necessary to the second part of Henry IV, continuing to his death and coronation of Henry V. So I also looked at the second part of the Henry IV where necessary to sort of draw comparisons between Hal and his father. Um, because his father makes a lot of interesting, there's a lot of interesting use of clothing 
within the plays um and Henry the fourth kind of talks about this idea of how he like dressed himself up in like the robes of the church and how he was trying to present himself as being very lawful and it's like yeah but it was all a performance whereas Henry the fifth um acting is like a temporary thing whereas everything that Henry V ends up doing, everything that Hal in the Henry IV plays before he's king, everything he ends up doing, he stands by his words. And he's really the only person to do so. When you think about where Bodenbrook came from, from deception, although Hal kind of has moments of deception, he very much is a man of his word and even when he's acting out these like um it's almost like a metafictional metatheatricality moment where he and Falstaff who's kind of like his alternative father figure who's one of the men of the tavern um they act out this play where a uh, Falstaff pretends to be his father or they switch roles and Hal pretends to be king and then Falstaff pretends to be Hal and he's begging him not to banish him and how very cleverly says um i shall i will or like something along the lines of basically like he will and by the end of the play and when during his coronation and everything he does he banishes false stuff as he promised to do so it's a very interesting play i highly recommend them if you're a fan of shakespeare some people absolutely hate the history plays and i remember one of my old literature teachers said she absolutely she just couldn't get on with them i loved them i find them fascinating they're really interesting so if anyone's watched this thank you and if you have any questions feel free to comment below bye